There we go. This meeting is being recorded. Got it. Shall we roll now? Whenever you're Please. ready. Yes. Sure, Andrea, yeah. would you like to do the introductions or would you like me? Please, that's the stage, Tom. <laughs> okay, beautiful. Well, welcome everybody to uh, Thursday, was it March 24th, 2022, the Supply Chain and Trade Finance Special Interest Group uh, session today. We'll have uh, Rajat joining us here, uh, representing Moby today. We'll give him a second here because he has a day job. We'll let him talk about it, De Dex Freight, a little bit here um, <laughs> on his day job. But he's also a big part of Moby. He's been involved with it for a while. Um, I contacted him when I saw some stuff about Dex Freight and thought that he might, it might be an interest to hear about that. And uh, it turns out the Dex Freight isn't using Hyperledger, but Moby is. And so that's why Rajat is going to share with us this EV battery uh, pack traceability pilot. Uh, at Moby. So um, we're recording this session here. Uh, as is normal with the case with Hyperledger events, all are welcome. And um, any antitrust thoughts, we don't have those part of the charts, but you know, this is an open session here. So please don't share anything that's competitive in nature, or conclusion or any of that kind of stuff. Um, let's see, anything else here? Uh, and I was wrong when I put in the Hyperledger, the supply chain SIG uh, uh, email or blog yesterday that this was the first, this is actually the second of our events. So Rajat, thanks for being the second now. Um, and we have some more uh, cooked up here uh, coming forward that we'll tell you about. Uh, and Eric, do you wanna say anything about the blog and uh, our wiki and stuff like that, how that's coming along just for everyone has a little flavor there? Uh, sure thing, Tom. Uh, we've been working uh, behind the scenes to uh, merge the old supply chain and the old trade finance uh, wiki pages. Uh, so uh, that's under uh, underway um, on that. Uh, you'll find all, all the old resources, all the old meetings that we need to transfer over and the new stuff moving forward for sure. Um, we'll also share the mailing list for those who are not yet on our mailing list. And uh, for those uh, young kids out there, we also have a Discord channel uh, where we pop in from time to time, and uh, we'll be uh, sharing that link on uh, on the wiki page. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, work in progress. Lots of stuff to do, and uh, should be over soon. Okay, beautiful. So with that, Rajat, I'm going to turn it over to you here for your uh, your wisdom and thoughts and insights and. Uh, you can tell us whether you'd like questions to wait or whether you'd like questions to uh, come come along the way. Um, either way is fine. Uh, I guess come along the way is, is better. Uh, so that way we're all fresh with those questions and answers. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, Rajat, it's all yours. Okay, great. Um, I, I do have to sign off like five minutes prior because I need to have, I need to go to another talk uh, if that's okay with y'all. Absolutely. All right, then. Uh, well, uh, thank you, Tom and, and Andrea and the and the SIG uh, for the opportunity to come and talk to you, come and talk to you all. Um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, forgive me for for not having pretty um, good looking slide decks. Uh, so they're pretty boring at this point. But I'll try my best to 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 make a good point of, of what we're trying to do, and and hopefully um, uh, we all learn uh, something out of um, out of the out of the work we're doing. Um, um, so I'm going to talk about uh, the EV battery pack traceability pilot that Moby is doing, um, <clears throat> and hold on. So okay, there you go. So so today's agenda is. Is I'm going to talk about the pilot objectives and scope. Um, uh, well, the scope is repeated there, um, and some architecture and, and some tech primitives. So this is where Hyperledger Fabric comes in. Um, some next steps and um, early scaling challenges. The, the pilot is in a very early stage, um, so uh, we've identified some scaling challenges, uh, but I'm pretty sure we'll. Um, we'll, we'll learn more uh, 
as as the pilot uh, continues uh, for over over time this year um, and hopefully next. Um, <clears throat> so about myself, uh, doctor in transportation, two thousand five, New Jersey. Uh, I used to work for Texas A&M University as a research scientist uh, for over thirteen something years. Uh, um, had a privilege of working with uh, several uh, federal, state, and and uh, U.S. And, and foreign entities, foreign governments, uh, in various uh, V2X projects, transportation pro projects. I uh, also uh, published a book about blockchain last year. Um, I'm also co-founder of Dex Freight, which is a, a blockchain-based logistics company. I also work with Mobi as working group's lead. Uh, in that capacity, um, I coordinate um, all the working groups slash committees um, at Mobi. Uh, they're uh, differentiated by various uh, use cases and, and verticals. Um, so one of the working groups that I lead is, is called Supply Chain Working Group. Um, so about Mobi, uh, it's, a, it's a global consortium of um, mobility companies um, started in 2018. Um, so we have members, uh, about 100 or plus members, um, including um, top top 10 uh, OEMs for GM, Honda, um, Toyota Industries, um, BMW. Uh, we have tier one suppliers like Denso, Hitachi, Tochu, um, and uh, service providers like Accenture, um, infrastructure providers like AWS, and, and, and uh, a lot of good folks um, uh, that are in mobility space, uh, contributing to Mobi's core uh, <clears throat> um, core objective of, of creating various standards um, with regards to using blockchain and associated technologies in, in mobility verticals. Um, so, like I said, uh, one of the working groups or committees uh, is a supply chain working group. It's co-chaired by BMW and Ford. Um, the objective of the group is, is to develop data specifications and reference architectures and other standards that will uh, prescribe interfaces, data structures, on-chain, off-chain storage, um, those uh, primitives, as well as some governance uh, regarding the use of blockchain in various supply chain use cases. And, and supply chain, as you all know, it's quite complex. And <clears throat> uh, before I was part of the working group, um, I, had, I had no knowledge of the nuances of automotive supply chain, which, which turned out to be very, very complex. Um, so, so when when the working group um, was talking about the, so the working group went through phases so um, and that's typical of all the working groups at Mobi, the the first um, task is is to um, develop standards, data schemas, reference implementations, um, and then the second phase um, is to then um, sort of battle test those standards. Um, because we want to, we want to learn, you know, what's um, you know if the standards are good enough for for field work and actual implementation. So the pilots, we found that pilots are a good way to, to sort of battle test those standards. Um, so the working group decided, um, you know, through a consensus process, that um, we'll do a parts traceability, um, high value parts traceability um, in supply chain, <clears throat> physical track and trace. Um, and the first thing we decided was, why do we need parse traceability, or why do the, the stakeholders need parse traceability? And and it kind of, it, that need has sort of evolved over time. Um, that's what I felt. Um, part of being the working group, uh, initially, it was more about you know how to reduce the recall cost of those high value parts. Um, a lot of those high value parts are also called safety parts. Uh, because those parts are the one that they're <clears throat> heavily scrutinized under if there's a massive recall. Um, and regulatory bodies like NHTSA, uh, NSTSA, and, and other European regulatory bodies, um, you know, those look closely on, on those um, safety parts. Um, and then uh, for the last, I would say, five years, the you know, big OEMs have all started 
um, talking about their sustainability goals. You know, they want to be carbon neutral by you know, 10 years and, and, and reduce carbon emissions by X percent. So they've all made those um, uh, made those announcements. So that now they, I guess they have to live with it. Um, the third point is interesting, which is the sustainability related regulations that's that's slowly coming out. And one of them is EU battery directive. And um, I, I strongly recommend everybody to, if you're in supply chain world, um, you know, take a look at that directive. It's a, it's a proposed directive um, that that's been that was crafted in 2019 20, uh, 2020. Um, it's it's it was supposed to be enacted earlier this year, but because of the whole situation going in Europe, uh, most likely it'll be delayed. Uh, but the battery directive is is a very ambitious <clears throat> goal of the EU to basically um, physically track and trace uh, batteries from its first life to second life to all the way to end of life. Um, and and the goal is to minimize. Um, uh, maximize its use and minimize uh, uh, minimize um, the uh, the instance when you know, just have to throw the batteries in, in a landfill because batteries have a lot of plasma hazardous materials, right? Um, so that's the third point. The fourth point is reducing losses due to counterfeit parts. This is this is known. Um, this is a this could be a big problem. This has been a big problem for OEMs, especially um, now that that the OEMs are slowly moving into three D. 3D printing, and they've seen their 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 three D printing plans and files being you know, stolen and all that stuff. Um, the the fifth point is uh, was also interesting to me um, when one of the OEMs mentioned that um, you know a lot of the tier N suppliers, um, the the folks, the businesses who are on the uh, um, supply basic materials and basic parts, um, uh, are mostly small businesses. You know, spread around the globe, and they always have problem um, um, coordinating or integrating with uh, bigger suppliers, and and <clears throat> and so um, um, they, the the working group felt like you know we need to have these reference implementation standards for for to reduce the barriers to entry for these small businesses, and and finally the 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 whole idea of blockchain is, is horizontal collaboration, right? Um, <clears throat> so can we started, a, can I ask a quick question back on the previous sure. chart, how, how much did after aftermarket parts come into the discussion or was it all really more the, uh, manufacturing kind of the, the plant, the car. It's, it's mostly, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the first market, not, not so much an aftermarket, but okay. they do recognize that the, the whole counterfeit part has. Um, the potential where the the aftermarket devices may not uh, follow the spec of of the original design, and they could be added to the um, to the vehicles, and they have an issue of now, you know, what do we do with the warranties, right? Um, so it, it was discussed, but it's mostly the the whole the counterfeit part scope is. I think it, it includes the aftermarket parts as well. Okay, good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, so as we as we thought about the, the whole um, you know parts track and trace, um, so we the first thing we, we did was um, we defined the scope and then we spent about a couple of months um, working on the on the workflow, the actual workflow of, of how parts move upstream and downstream from you know tier tier one suppliers all the way to to the OEM to the dealers um, and uh, all the way to the end user. Um, and at the same time, we we're also thinking about, okay, so if you do a physical track and trace, if you're able to do it, then what's next, you know, what can you do with it? Um, and we could quickly realize that the physical custody, track and trace of physical custody of parts, that is essentially a, a foundational layer. And once you have that, then you can add, you know, things like emissions tracking and sustainability tracking, um, all of all of those good things, um, even recycling, recollection, um, is actually built on the ability to first <clears throat> track and trace the, the, the physical custody of, of parts as they move upstream and downstream. So, um, so we, we, we say we call this a multi layer construct is, you know, first let's do the foundation, which is the, the physical custody of parts, and then 
and then we can start adding other applications on top. Um, the, <clears throat> the, the complexity comes from, from um, uh, you know, one of these uh, kind of realities of the automotive supply chain, which is um, there are several tier, uh, a, a tier one can um, provide parts to several OEMs. Um, a tier N can provide uh, materials and you know basic parts to several tier ones. Um, but as you go down, like from OE to the OEM level, uh, <clears throat> you know, so they get they obviously receive you know different kinds of parts based on their specs, um, maybe from the same tier, same tier, same company, um, and uh, because the because their relationship, even though the relationship is one on one, they're they're getting materials and some you know core parts from from different parts, different uh, different tier end suppliers. Um, so the 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 complexity of um, you know data uh, data being tossed around uh, between different layers of of the supply chain can get quite quite complex. Um, so so one of the things we did was um, you know what is the essential uh, component of of physical track and trace, um, and so the the general agreement was that the hard part was identity, right? Um, and um, creating almost a digital twin of this parts flow, um, <clears throat> all the way from tier end to you know OEM to dealer is is to be able to um, able to number one assign identities to different parts. Uh, making sure those identities are recognizable by, you know, plus one, minus one um, stakeholders or your partners, um, and be able to assign those identities to, um, you know, common, common, um, you know, common uh, documentations, like delivery notes, um, uh, delivery notes, advance shipment notifications. Um, bill of ladings, uh, those kind of things. Um, and one of the things that they mentioned was like a lot of times the identity identity that's assigned by a tier 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 one um, uh, may not be recognizable by OEM and so on and so forth. Um, so the, the the first thing that we wanted to do in this in this parts kind of provenance is is to bring everybody into a same structure of, of identity. And, and as you may know, Moby created the, the vehicle identity. Um, and then we're now working on the battery identity um, <clears throat> and also you know, universal device identities. Um, so our challenge was to, okay, you can create a new identity structure, but it still needs to be, um, it still needs to encapsulate the existing identity structures that's assigned by, which are mostly serial numbers that's assigned by you know manufacturers right so that was a challenge and then if you want to do um you know the the provenance of parts uh, through blockchain or dlt or what have you then those identity structure has to be um has to be the, has to be the same um so um so this is where the 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 verifiable credentials and dids and um uh, the W3C standards come in, and we're we're using that. I'll go through go to that in just a moment. But the EV battery was chosen as a, as a uh, um, as as a part um, in the pilot mainly because the EV batteries are getting a lot of attention. Um, as you know, most of the OEMs have have um, have declared that they're going to you know either phase out the ICE vehicles, uh, internal combustion engine vehicles. Um, and we all know that the EV battery, the, um, the market share of EV battery is growing everywhere. Um, so because of that, and, and because of the EU battery uh, directive, um, the EV batteries are obviously getting a lot of attention. So we decided, hey, what part do we choose? And so everybody said, let's choose EV battery. Um, 
So EV battery um, is uh, the, the the top level of EV battery is EV, called EV battery pack, which is which has <clears throat> a bunch of modules. Uh, so if you look at the, the the left side, these little boxes are the individual modules. So typically in in an EV like Tesla, um, uh, you have sixteen modules per pack, um, and and the, and one pack has other components like battery management systems and circuits and all that but usually they have like 16 modules and each module has a bunch of cells i think there's like 36 48 cells or something like that um so then the question was okay you know you, you want to track pack uh and you want to track modules uh why do you want to track the modules um, and then what happens is when you when you look at the um, if you have a problem with the, uh, the, the battery pack or the battery system, typically uh, what they would do is they would look at the modules. And then if any of the modules is at fault, they, they swap out the modules, right? They don't, they, they, they being the, the dealers or service providers, uh, maintenance service providers don't go up to the cell level. It's very difficult for them at this point. Um, so we decided let's not go to the cell level. Let's let's stick to the pack level and and the module level, <clears throat> just to keep things simple. Um, so we have we've categorized the pilot in two objectives: the business objectives and the technical objectives. The business objectives for from from you know the Moby member point of view is you know we want to they want you know they they want to be. They want to be provided with what's what are the lessons learned, what are the challenges, what are the solutions, what are the you know, related to to scaling this type of uh, physical track and trace. Um, and obviously, we also want to be able to show you know how what happens when somebody wants to query, you know who has the battery pack, who has the battery module for first life, second life uh, use cases at any given time, right? Um, an example of that is that makes the recalls a lot easier. Um, be able to estimate time resources required to uh, move battery packs. And so this is with regards to um, estimating greenhouse gas emissions during the transportation process. As, as you all know, transportation um, also creates a significant greenhouse gas emissions and, and also carbon footprint. So one of the problems with, their, with the pilots that they've done before is that it's very difficult for them to um, get those numbers from the transportation companies because transportation is kind of a completely separate workflow from from the typical manufacturing process um so it's it's a very research oriented pilot <clears throat> and uh and some of the other technical objectives was to obviously to map out current workflow of parts movement upstream and downstream uh it was quite a challenging uh exercise um, we also, the pilot obviously has to maintain the current workflow, right, that the OEMs and suppliers typically use. Um, and uh, in terms of technical objectives, we wanted to test how uh, various DLT blockchain primitives work, including verified credential DIDs, zero knowledge proofs, um, and, and also <clears throat> um, kind of battle test um, Mobi and other standards that's available out there, including Mobi's VID and uh, VCs and that's our W3C standards. There's a new one that's coming up, uh, Revocation 2020. Um, so we, we, we kind of outlined these two major objectives of the pilot. Yeah. Quick question, Rajat, back there. Um, were you trying to track just that when the battery pack kind of gets formed or were you are you also trying to track all the parts and sub-assemblies before it gets formed? Um, at this point, the scope is the, the, the battery packs are and the modules are sent from the tier one okay. suppliers, okay. tier one manufacturers to the to the um, to the OEM. And OEM then basically um, puts those packs to the vehicle, right? Um, and then those vehicles are sent to the dealers. So that's the level so of granularity is the battery pack and yeah. the module. Okay, got it. Thank you. Are there any other questions out there for Ajat uh, before he goes on? I'll give it three beats. One, two, three. <laughs> Rajat, continue, please. Thank you. 
Okay, so just to continue on the current scope, EV battery module, physical track and trace, upstream and downstream. Um, we wanted to limit the, the suppliers to tier one. Obviously there's you know, multiple tiers, uh, we call it tier N suppliers, just to keep things simple. Um, so in the, in the process of physical movement of those parts um, <clears throat> uh, or packs, um, the, the logistics process is, is uh, we wanted to simplify it. So we just assume there's one logistics provider uh, that's um, picking up parts from, uh, let's say a supplier and, and, and from the supplier and delivering it to an OEM. Obviously that's, that's not always the case. Um, uh, if you're sending a part you know, cross-border or international, then you have multiple logistics providers and multiple modes involved. Um, but we wanted to, for the, for the sake of the pilot, um, given the time, time, time and resource, we want to keep it simple. So we assume there's one logistics provider who's taking care of um, all the information. Um, we're not doing any integrations with any legacy systems at this point. That would be a, a significant cost, um, <clears throat> um, cost to the pilot. Um, we're also not working on any governance uh, with regards to the, the layer zero operation. I'll talk about the layer zero in just a moment. Um, for example, uh, you know, who can be part of the part of the um, track and trace, um, you know, who runs the nodes and those kind of things. So we're not taking care, we're not dealing with that. There's a separate, uh, there's going to be a separate initiative on, on, on the governance of those nodes. Um, so the, the flow that we have in the current scope is you have a tier one supplier to the left um, and it creates the battery, uh, battery pack, um, creates what we call a battery birth certificate, which is, which is, um, which, uh, which is based on our vehicle birth certificate. Uh, it includes, uh, it's based on the, um, the verifiable credential schema. Um, that birth certificate is then transferred to the OEM uh, obviously, tier one supplier hires a logistics provider, and then the logistics provider, you know, picks up the shipment, you know, delivers to the OEM, <clears throat> and um, there's a trip start and and end certificates that's um, you know provided to uh, provided to the logistics provider, uh, which which says um, uh, which provides credentials as to you know when did they when did they start a trip and when did they end the trip. Um, and if they were able, to, they um, have all the documentations necessary uh, to verify if the right um, right pack was delivered uh, or not, uh, based on the communication between the tier one and OEM. Um, so it basically follows um, follows that way so up to downstream, uh, all the way to the owner, uh, and then we also doing sort of an up kind of reverse flow where. Um, an example is the owner reports that the battery pack, battery pack has some, some issues, takes it to the dealer, and the dealer looks at the pack, and dealer says, um, "I think you know five out of the sixteen modules are not working," and in that case, the dealer sends the pack back to the OEM, um, and the OEM then uh, reports it to the supplier, and then supplier says, "Okay, we're going to replace." the five of the modules, or, you know, we're going to replace the whole thing. <clears throat> but so this is a very, very simple kind of happy path uh, of the physical track and trace. In, in actuality, it's, it, there's much more nuances to it. Um, uh, for example, in, in, in the case of logistics, you may have warehouses involved, you may have, um, you know, customs involved if you're, if you're sending the pack. Um, you know, across the border, you may have multiple trucking companies involved, uh, multiple for forwarders involved. Um, and also if you're sending, uh, if, if the OEM is sending, o OEM receives the faulty packs and then the OEM says, okay, we can't, sends it to the supplier and supplier says, okay, we can't fix it. We'll have to replace it. Uh, and what they do is they'll send those faulty packs or modules to a, either to a recycler or, um, um, or, or where they you know, just um, <clears throat> kind of trash it. So they, they, they would send it to you know, some other companies too, uh, for that matter. Um, so all these certificates are, are you know, essentially verified credentials. 
uh, using W3C standards. Um, the, so one thing we've done is we've we've created all these structures um, in as JSON files in, in GitHub. So any member who wants to run their own you know pilot, they can just you know borrow all the certificates um, and, and the schemas associated with that. Um, There's the not major components. Question. Another, sure. another question there. Sorry, I missed your question today. Uh, how are you physically identifying the individual boundary packs or is that, that not really in scope? Are you using RFID? Are you doing scan and barcodes? What do you think? So um, the, um, um, right now, the, all the battery packs uh, come with a serial number uh, okay. that's either put in by the supplier or the OEM itself. Um, so what we're working on is a battery identification number, which, which would, um, look very similar to the vehicle identification number that we're all familiar with. That's a 17 digit code that you see on the windshield and at the door. Okay. So we're working on that so that, um, that anybody can look at it and kind of decode some basic information about the pilot, uh, about the battery. There's another initiative that. Global Battery Alliance is, is working on in response to EU directive is to create a battery passport. Um, and that includes um, RFID or QR code. You, you, know, you use the QR code and it'll tell you the full history of the battery bag. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. So the major components in the pilot, um, uh, the, the obviously we need to take care of the, the, the IDs, right? The vehicle ID. The battery ID and the, the battery pack ID that's associated with the vehicle ID and 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 all of that. Um, so we're 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 using W3C for that. Um, there's a there's a infrastructure that Mobi is 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 building. Uh, it's been tested right now with with our OEM members. It's called um, Integrated Trust Network. It's essentially basically a federated network of us. Um, it's implemented in. Uh, Hyperledger Fabric and AWS. Um, so that layer zero infrastructure is 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 the one that keeps track of uh, the dates. Um, the the third component is the use case specific minimum set of attributes. So for the pilot, we've defined the attributes for um, you know uh, documents like um, advance shipment notifications, the bill of lading, the uh, purchase orders. Um, because because the OEMs and the suppliers they do um, a verification if they receive the right part or not. Uh, so we have we have defined attributes for that. Uh, <clears throat> we're borrowing some attributes from schema.org so that we don't have to create new attributes. Uh, some attributes are created by our uh, Mobi standards. Um, so the, uh, the, the, the fourth one, so those uh, three are components are kind of a main base components. Um, and so as the pilot progresses, we're, we're going to work more on the framework to share information between the companies. Um, uh, what are, the, what are the, um, the legal constraints and practical constraints of sharing different information between different stakeholders? Um, so that's that uh, with the you know blockchain DLT uh, underneath. So all that all that framework, uh, we still need to work on it. And obviously, like I said before, the governance of those nodes and layer zero infrastructure. Um, uh, let me see. All right. So this is a kind of a high level architecture and not too technical on this stuff. We have a technical team development team working on it. Um, so we have the, the, the bottom layer zero infrastructure is federated nodes on Hyperledger fabric. Uh, we call it integrated trust network uh, because Mobi is using that network for other use cases as well. Uh, other pilots that we're doing. Um, and there's, a um, bunch of our members are already <clears throat> running the nodes and some are in the phase, some are in the stage of, of testing those nodes. Um, there's a middle layer, which is sort of an orchestration layer that issues the verifiable credentials. We call it an orchestration layer uh, that is slowly being built. And on top is obviously the application layer, which is the track and trace. Um, and so um, 
there's the legacy system, which we're not touching at this point, but we're creating the digital twin or the nodes um, that connects the legacy systems of that stakeholder. And there, so we're providing some basic functionality to those nodes. Uh, and the, that basic functionality is the, um, you know, creating your dits and and um, registering those dits to the to the um, to the um, uh, to the layer zero, um, and depending on the use case, then then those stakeholders can you know add multiple functionalities to the to the to the node. Um, so in for our pilot, since we're not connecting with any legacy systems, the the all the data will be obviously be kind of simulated data at this point. All right. Um, so uh, the digital twin, the node, um, the the one that highlighted in red. Uh, so if you if we um, kind of zoom in into that, it has several components. Uh, I, I'm not good at explaining all these components. So the digital twin is essentially a node that um, individual members run. Have a bunch of components in there. Um, encrypted, encrypted data vault. Uh, universal wallet, <clears throat> data sharing, um, you know, authentications and ABS service for endpoints um, that connects to their legacy systems and also connects to other uh, other nodes um, in that network and with the with the layer zero infrastructure. Um, let's see. All right, so there's just a bunch of questions in the chat box, Tom. You want to take over those? See like five of them. All right. There was one around presentation uh, being available here. So uh, we'll be able to share that. That was one of the questions. Mm -hmm. Were there others? Uh, let me see here. And we'll put the recording up on YouTube also. So I think that's what I see for questions right now. Or maybe I'm missing some. Okay. All right. I think that's it for it now, Tom. Say it again. I think that were that those were all of the questions for now. Okay, thank yeah. you, thank you. Okay, um, so this is my um, almost last slide. So uh, the way the pilots are um, structured at this point, we we do a three month feature release, and that's starting in April. Um, so we've done all the you know, screen designs, and user journeys, and all those good things. Um, the working group is now. Uh, discussing the next steps in the pilot. Um, so once you have, um, so the, the current scope, whether we expand the scope horizontally, include uh, more suppliers um, upstream, or, or where, whether we add depth to the current workflow. So that means adding, you know, warehousing, transloading, modal changes, um, um, and other tier end suppliers, right? So we're the working the committee is actually discussing that as we speak. Um, uh, so the scaling challenges that we've already kind of identified is, um, you know, obviously we're, we're we're gradually understanding the scaling challenges um, when <clears throat> when our stakeholders want to do this kind of physical track and trace. Um, and one of the biggest challenges that we see is that integration with their existing systems. Um, uh, they're because they're the ones that originate data about parts, right? So the, the digital twin or the notes that we have um, designed is that they need to you know, synchronize with their legacy systems. And that that adds a, a, a bit of a burden and cost to the stakeholders. Um, <clears throat> it may not be a significant challenge, but it's it still could be a challenge if if you know, we're talking about tier end suppliers or you know, a lot of them are small businesses. Um, and, um, you know, we, obviously we still need to work on the governance of those nodes uh, because it's a federated network. Um, there's also possibility of you know, sub network being formed different depending on the use cases. And at this point, we don't, we don't exactly know how that governance will, um, will happen. Um, and, and finally, the, the, the legal side of, of, of all this, right? Because they're all 
you know, most of the OEMs are publicly traded companies, so they have to be careful about uh, the you know <clears throat> trade secrets and all of the all of those good stuff. So we're still learning all of that. Um, and obviously, those could be you know legal side could be a, a significant challenge that uh, we haven't even we haven't even dealt with. Um, so with that, uh, I'll conclude my presentation. Um, if you want to get to me, there's different ways to do that. Um, you can you know, scan the QR code, get to my LinkedIn, connect me in LinkedIn, or send me an email. Uh, my book is also available in in various sources. Um, and that's it, Tom. Beautiful, Rajat. Thank you very much. Appreciate it here. Um, I see one question in the uh, um, chat box here. All the nodes spin up over cloud or native hardware nodes? And I think you mentioned AWS, so maybe that's the answer to the question, but uh, I'll let you answer that. And folks, uh, please get your questions up, whether you want to raise your hand or we'll just uh, open it up here. And uh, right after Rajat finishes, you can ask your next question. Yeah, the, uh, right now, the the nodes that we've spun up is in AWS, but um, uh, other members are spinning up in in different environment. And but it sounds like some of those might be their own dedicated hardware nodes. Could be. They Could be. Okay. Got it. Okay. Good. Uh, I have, I have one question, and then we'll go to the floor here. Uh, how much time did you spend thinking about tokenizing any of this information at all? Or it was like not, not even worthwhile at this point in time to have that discussion? Uh, no, we, we have not discussed tokens at this point. Um, Moby's position is they don't want to touch tokens. Um, if you're talking about um, cryptocurrency tokens, right? That's what you're talking about? Right, or, you know, or some sort of digital twin, an NFT that represents a battery pack. I mean, it could be something like that. Even. Yeah, um, you know, tokens, we're, the Moby's position is not to talk about tokens because they're, you know, the, their members are all publicly traded companies and they want to be careful um, not to get associated with, uh, with, uh, with a, a nonprofit like Moby issuing tokens. So that's one. Um, with regards to NFTs, we're we're just exploring NFTs for some other use cases, but but not on this one. Uh, so yeah. this one, we feel at up, up to this point, the the dis and verified credentials will will just be fine. Yeah, good, good. Okay, who else out there? What questions do you have for Rajat? Anybody else? I see one. Thank you there in the chat. For you, Rajat. <laughs> Welcome. Okay. So, I guess Rajat, you did such a great job of answering everyone's questions <laughs> that uh, there's no <laughs> questions. Or I, was, or I was the only person who had questions <laughs> out there, in addition to another person. So you see Rajat's yeah. book there. Oh, did somebody say something? Hi, Rajat. Uh, yeah. Can we have the Arctic diagram if it is possible on the uh, the conference page or the uh, any uh, mm, any uh, format of your uh, books or anywhere how the entire architecture has been built like uh, anchor pair how it's designed and nodes are how it's designed and fabric certification it's how it's getting authorized so I just wanted very curious to see architecture diagram. Um, our, I think the architecture diagrams in the Mobi website, um, you'll have to ping me and send me an email so I can um, connect you to the right source and provide you with that information. Sure, um, sure, definitely. I, I, I have requested, I have requested yeah. uh, the print request or the LinkedIn so that I can give okay. you my, my email ID so that uh, I'll go through all the stuff. So I'm, okay. I'm preparing for a hyperlecture fabric administration examination. So this would okay. be very useful. Uh, study case for me to get the pass through. <laughs> yeah, we have we have a tech tech uh, stack team. Uh, I'll mm -hmm. connect you with with them, and you can ask. Questions. Really sounds great. Really sounds great. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Any any further questions out there? Okay. Well, with that, uh, Rajat has shared lots of ways to get a hold of him there. <laughs> so that's good. Two email addresses, a QR code, LinkedIn, 
et cetera out there, um, or you can buy his book. So that that's good. Um, with that, Rajad, thank you very much for uh, sharing uh, what you guys are doing there with Moby. Glad you're using Hyperledger uh, fabric there. And it sounds like and you're uh, trying Absolutely. to crack all the identity work, uh, which is uh, yep. work in yep. of itself, right? <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. It is, it is all, very challenging. All, all the things. So uh, the, for the folks who asked, uh, Rajad, if you well, we'll be able to share your presentation on our wiki. And then this, this presentation will go up on YouTube so people can watch it. And we'll, we'll put something out there so that there's a link and then we'll get that to you also, Rajat. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Enjoy. Uh, we'll look for uh, additional sessions here and look for uh, our wiki getting up and running here shortly. So thanks, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the day. And we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.